and good morning, Richard Commanders, and welcome back to Saturday morning, uh, where we will continue our quest to find the best ever retro games and voyage where no one's gone before and blow up stuff that no one's blown up before and generally seek out issues in games that nobody else is bothered to try and stuff. <laughs> That's what we gotta do. That's important. I'm I'm pleased that some of you are still here actually because after my Star Citizen stream yesterday where I effectively nuked my entire team <laughs> accidentally on purpose, it would it would seem. Um, I'm surprised anybody's still left. So those of you who survived, welcome back. <laughs> Drew Nukem. <laughs> yes. That's pretty much, pretty much what happened. Um, here's a top tip, okay? If you're flying at a low, low, low altitude in your spaceship, okay, don't drop a nuke out of the cargo bay <laughs> at point blank range. Not recommended. No stars. <laughs> funny asteroid. Funny asteroid was flying behind us in the in the ship. Uh, not sure if he was in a safe distance away, actually, but uh, he was far enough away that he didn't get obliterated, <laughs> like all the rest of us did. <laughs> but it was basically there saying there was nothing left you could hold, even in the palm of your hand. Ah, dear. <laughs> so, so there we go. It was it was lots of fun to watch. So I, I must go back and watch that stream actually find out what. <laughs> somebody somebody suggested I drop a nuke, so of course I did. <laughs> I don't think about these things. Six kilometers was enough, says Funny Asteroid. Okay, so it's not not a huge nuclear bomb, but obviously not big enough. Um, but a fully loaded ship with its armor and shields, <laughs> point blank range, not good enough. Never mind, never mind. Anyway, we're here to blow more stuff up this morning. Uh, as we as we uh, as we continue on with uh, with whatever this game is called, Conflict, Descent, Free Space, The Great War, <laughs> to give it its full title. <laughs> or Free Space One, as I think it probably should have been known. Uh, but never mind. Anyway, before we do that, of course, we must do the thing because the thing is the thing. The thing must be done. Ah, who have we got in the chat this morning? We have Commander Kelvinator is here. Good morning, Commander Kelvinator. Kelvinating as always, which I think we've decided is is cooling things down to very, very, very low temperature indeed. The Harkonnens are here, fresh and early in the morning, ready to invade Arrakis. As we know, Arrakis isn't the best in the morning so let's hope that the invasion doesn't get too far ahead before the defense forces of Iraq just get into full swing uh my own toxin is here as well Britu 81 is here Erid and Dun Dragon is here as well good good morning to you Winter Mute GB here of course of course of course and he says good morning all and welcome to Chat Wars the ongoing stream where Drew Wager's hat valiantly tries to deflect the slings and arrows, jibes and brickbats aimed at it have you just assumed the gender of my hat Interview GB. <laughs> it might, it might, it, it might be a female hat. I mean, who knows? Have you asked? What, what pronoun should my hat have? <laughs> By the heroic retro commanders, while distracting him from playing a space game. Indeed, um, the funny asteroid is here. Yay! <laughs> the lone survivor of my Star Citizen stream last night. <laughs> because. It's never a good space game without a funny asteroid. And, and <laughs> funny asteroids are the only things that survive uh, in, a, in a nuclear <laughs> a nuclear explosion. Um, DJ Squibby is here. <laughs> good to see you. Commander Tragic Blue 21 is here. Technelligence is here as well. Uh, Zalos Corvus is here. Milan the Madman is here. Um, <laughs> who's on time today for once? Yeah, well, congratulations to you. And good morning from Cornwall. It's Stephen Usher. Always good to see you, Stephen. Uh, thanks for popping in. And uh, <laughs> more nukes, says DJ Scurry. Um Funny Asteroid says he was only late because we were bringing the beers. <laughs> and now the only thing left are the beers. Khan <laughs> uh, Man the Kelvinator making things cool. You can roll with that, can't you? Wintermute says, do I care? <laughs> Retu81, the best part of living in a country with gender neutral, no pronoun, neutral pronouns, it doesn't matter. So I don't know. I mean, my hat is my hat. Maybe it's just a some sort of sci-fi gestalt entity, my hat. Um, um, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, good morning, everyone, says NDP783. So there we go. Everybody's here. Right, I suppose we should fire up the game now I'm, I'm anticipating this will work a little bit better than it did last week um, although I've just noticed in Steam that both Spaceborne 2 um, 
and Starship Simulator, which is obviously the stuff that's been going on Thursday streams, have just had an update. So that's quite exciting. Um, <laughs> so let's go back and have a look at those at some point. Uh, but anyway, we're here to play. What are we here to play? Where's it gone? Descent. There we go. So Conflict, Descent, Space, Free Space, The Great War, <laughs> Part One. <laughs> right, here we go. So uh, I need to switch over to this mode here, don't I? Free Space, Conflict, The Great War. Um, I'm going to hope the settings are the same as last time. Let's see if it works. Yep. Space conflict free descent. <laughs> Just all the words. <laughs> Lucky the Ouija's here as well. I can see you. Um, right. I think. I think that's working. It's working on my screen, and it looks like it's working on OBS as well. So. Right. So. Okay. So. The <laughs> choose pilot scroll. Right, so last week we had ended up. I mean, last sorry, I should do it properly, shouldn't it? Last week's exciting episode, <laughs> Drew plays Descent, Conflict, Space, Free Space. The <laughs> I'm not going to do that for very long. Um, we discovered we'd, we'd been having a war with some aliens called the Vedusians or something. I keep wanting to call them the Vesuvians, <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> that's a volcano in Italy uh, that I once walked up rather inadvisedly. Um, so, um, uh, it's, it's not the Vesuvians, it's the v v <laughs> it's something else beginning with V. Uh, and they, they were the baddies. But then, like some uber baddies. <laughs> okay, so hang on. <laughs> You've got Vesuvians and Vedusians. <laughs> One of them. It doesn't really matter. They're the baddies. Uh, they're, the, they're the normal baddies. Um, and then some, some like uber baddies have turned up as well. Uh, we don't, I don't think we have a name for them yet. Um, and they're just going around with their smug superior spaceships not getting shot because um, they've got like amazing shields and amazing weapons and stuff um, now we were trying to get our capital ship away through a jump gate uh, but it for some strange reason <laughs> the local oh we have got the name the shivens we call them the shivens okay okay so the shivens are the probably proper bad dudes so <laughs> we've got reduced the, We've got the what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I've got three different spellings of the bad guys already in the chat. We've got either the Vazu the Vazudans or the Vedusans or the Vezsudans. <laughs> it begins with me. <laughs> um, right, anyway, so uh, oh, here we go. Right. Um, last Terry week command has confirmed the existence of a new species. Here we go. So we further are. contact is established, command has designated them Shivans. Shivans, there they are. The Shivans have inflicted heavy casualties to both Terran and Vasudan forces in the Beta Cygni and Vega systems, and appear to be making a rapid push into other key systems along the Terran Vasudan front. All contact has been lost with our forces in the IKEA and Ross 128 system. <laughs> in the IKEA system. The Vasudan government has contacted the GTA Pulse. and proposed a ceasefire. Oh. Considering the reports regarding the Vasudan and Terran losses to the Shivans, this should not come as a surprise. Terran Command has not yet responded. Expect to hear more from Terran Command on this later today. Okay, so <laughs> a couple of things worth noting at this point on this mission briefing. Uh, I didn't know there was a star system called IKEA. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the flat pack furniture comes from. Um, do they have really, really, really good meatballs there as well, Matt? Um, anyway, um, the other thing is that this the, the border between our space and the Vasudans isn't very far away. They're talking about Ross 128, which literally <laughs> is just round the corner. That's like about 20 light years away from Earth. And Vega, um, the star Vega, I think, is only about... 40 light years away from Earth. So wherever the border is between human space and Vesudan space, it's not very far away from Earth. Uh, <laughs> um, Commander Lenin, free space, it is indeed free space. So Shivans as in the god Shiva. Um, so um, <laughs> IKEA is next to MFI and TFS, just around the corner from B&Q. Um, so there's a bit of yeah, there's um, it's, there's a bit of hubris in the name Galactic Terran Alliance. Yes, like Ross Ross Twenty Eight is not very very far away. <laughs> so I'm not sure you can really say it's a Galactic Terran Alliance when it's, it's only a few few dozen light years across. Um, but anyway, right. So 
All Shivan forces should be considered a serious threat. I think that's fair enough. You are yep. authorized to engage any Shivan ship that stands in the way of your mission objectives. Attempts to establish communication with the Shivans have failed. Intelligence will continue its attempts to learn more about this new adversary. Okay, so we have tried. What we little have, information oh. has been learned about Shivan technology the concerns pause their fighter work, shielding system. The shield system makes them nearly impervious to our ML-16 laser. Okay, so we can't shoot them down right R &D now. R&D is currently modifying the Avenger prototype cannon to make it more useful against the shields. Additionally, our fighters cannot target their ships due to our lack of data regarding the Shivan electronic system. Can we nuke them? We Plans can try. are currently underway to remedy this situation. Okay, so we, they're basically, at the moment, they're totally invulnerable. As we discovered at the end of last week, there's Terran no point shooting them. is working around the clock to give us more information. Until then, we have been ordered to move into the Beta Cygni system and monitor any activity. Okay, so that's that's another funny one. It's like working around the clock. <laughs> I mean, back in the 90s, people still had clocks, right? How many of you guys have still got a clock? I mean, I have because I'm an old an old dude and I like old clocks. But um, I can't imagine many people having clocks in the in the far future of, of that kind of sense. Um, good old boomsticks might work. Kitsubian, can I comment about that invulnerability? Only if it's not involving spoilers, because we haven't played. I haven't played this game before, so I don't really want to know. Uh, NDP783 has got a clock. Good man. Is it a proper clock? Uh, when, when I say a proper clock, I mean one that's not electric or electronic. It's not a quartz clock, because that's, that's cheating, right? Because have a, it's got to have a mechanical mechanism of it. That's, that's a clock. Right, so um, we have got to continue. We've got to get the Galatea to Due the beta to increased jump encounters point. with Shivan forces, Terran Command has ordered the Galatea oh, and the Beta well Cygni system to monitor Shivan activity. The Galatea has taken quite a beating since her last repair. There isn't time to follow the safest route. Oh, we've got to follow a route as well. The Antares Beta Cygni jump node lies in the center of a dense asteroid field, making it one of the least used jump nodes in the galaxy. Who thought that was a good Standard idea? procedure would have us circumvent this node completely, requiring two jumps. Now we have no choice. Weapon systems have taken damage from enemy bombers. Galatea should be able to make it through the asteroid field, but Alpha Wing will be deployed to destroy approaching asteroids. Alpha Wing will fly point for the Galatea and destroy any asteroids that cross its flight path. I don't know, is it a spoiler if it's in the past mission? No, I think it's okay. The Galatea will be marked if it's already been mentioned. Targeting brackets. Destroy these asteroids first. Okay, so. Once the Galatea has jumped out, you are to report to the GTD Bastion stationed in Antares. The Bastion will take you to IKEA for your next mission. Your wing will rendezvous with the Galatea and Beta Cygni so upon completion of that mission. All I've got to do, basically, in this mission is shoot the targeted asteroids. Don't get distracted by the in the event of enemy attack, come in. you are to cover the Galatea's escape from the system. Because there's nothing we can do about the Shivan attack bombers. They're just invulnerable. Okay, so I failed this last time because I got distracted by the Shivan attackers. So let's just shoot asteroids today. So a bit about a bit like the intro screen, really, <laughs> to this game. It's just asteroids, but it's in 3D. So I've got to remember what those keys are. Asteroids on a collision path with the Galatea will be auto-targeted with white brackets on your HUD. My thrusters don't seem to be working. That seems to be... My thrusters not working. I'm sure it was west. Maybe it's not. Now we're going, well, I want to know what the thruster is. Oh, there we go, got some, got some thrusters. Got some monkeys, that'll do. Right, okay.
ideally I've thought of flying along its path would be the best thing to do. The big green sphere is the jump point. Okay, so let's try and get ahead of the ship a little bit. These asteroids seem to be floating in totally random directions. Stayed this dense for so long because these asteroids all seem to be. Uh, don't engage the fighters because it's pointless. There's no point engaging the fighters because you can't destroy them. So you've gone off to deal with the fighters, which is a waste of that.
Alatez deliberately maneuvering into the path of the asteroids just to give me something to shoot at. The Galate is taking damage. Alpha Wing, assist, please. How are we doing? 69%. Oh, it just seems to always be in the way of the asteroids.
This is actually ridiculous. It's actually really difficult. I'm not sure how you're supposed to to do that. Because it's not so much... It's just there's not enough firepower. There's too many asteroids. <sighs> Let's try that again then. And the, the Galatea seems to arrive. Asteroids on a collision path with the Galatea will be auto-targeted with white brackets on your HUD. Lots of boosting and keeping eyes on HUD. Okay. Literally just going from one to the other. Maybe the Galatea is not being part of it very, very well. <laughs> it does seem to get to the waypoint and just sit there.
destroyed, so it's pretty unrelenting, it has to be said.
get slowly destroyed, take to this fire shortly. Destruction, destruction of the reality is a major loss for the Terran Alliance. Thousands of lives were lost due to your poor execution. I don't think Perhaps so, this actually. task should have been given to a more skilled pilot, <laughs> who are hereby stripped of all rank and duties in the GTA. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, <laughs> no defence then. <laughs> Slightly harsh judgement, I think. It's an old game, so the difference in CPU speed may cause small error at the air, so... Is this what somebody would have just done a playthrough or just to check? You have failed the mission and cannot accept what do you want to return to debrief and go to flight deck replay mission. Well <laughs> I've failed so badly. I can't continue the game. Um That's not <laughs> that's not ideal. Return to debriefing. Okay, what does that allow me to do? Okay, that's basically there. Set difficulty to insane just for this mission. Um, go to flight deck. What did they expect? They only gave me five minutes of training. Well, and to be honest, my wingman buzzed off and didn't help. And then the ship couldn't be piloted, so I, I don't think I'm to blame. <laughs> I'm not sure if I go. As I recall, you can skip a mission if you've failed it enough times in a row. The difficulty increase will increase the rate of fire of all ships, including the Galatea, so it will... Well, we can try it again. Let's return to the flight deck, then. I don't want to exit the game. I want to get to the settings. So where would they be? Let's exit. Are there settings here? Options, there we are. Right, so skill level. A celestial word, isn't it? Okay, so I can put it onto very easy, or I can put it onto insane. Shall I? I don't know. Shall I try? What, what do you recommend? Dav, Bappy, hello there, Ensign Scroll. Yep. <laughs> Let's try both. Let's go for let's go for insane first. 
go for very easy and try that. Shall we? Well, <laughs> let's go for insane. <laughs> See what happens.
insane place to leave a jump gate. Let's try on the very easy and see how that compares. It just gets confused at the jump point, so it feels like that's a bug in the game. Due to increased encounter. I do have missiles, they don't seem to do a great deal of damage to the um, asteroids though. There are a bunch of them on board, I, I can use them. Maybe we'll just save them for the later stages of the, the mission. But it's a fairly it's not that far to that jump point, which is annoying. It does feel like the ship isn't doing what it's supposed to be doing.
frühere Archiven zu zentrieren.
kill one more. Okay, so maybe there's a bug. Okay, if it won't jump this time, I'll have to go ahead and look. To, for whatever reason, it can't get into the. It's just not lining up correctly, is it? So it's just getting smashed to pieces. We are taking a major beating. Protect the Galate, Alpha One. I can't detect. I can't. I can't protect it from total incompetence. I'm afraid. So it just. <laughs> it's just. It's. It's rotating, but it's I not. Need to Stelsis it was last night. Yeah, so it's just it's not aligning itself correctly, is it? Okay, so it's it's unwinnable this day. Right, okay, so let's quit. Right, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do some stuff. <sighs> right. Okay, so what do we <laughs> what do we have to do? He says randomly clicking all links. Okay, you'll probably get to find this hard to see. In fact, I'm finding it hard to see. Hello, I was having so much trouble with this mission. Okay, so the Galatea doesn't get stuck. Here's a link to a modified mission. Okay, <laughs> downloading dodgy stuff. According to the wiki, it's an easy mission to do on the medium setting. Okay. So, well, let's try this one, shall we? What do we do with this file? So, download it. Is there a god mode? Um, okay, so I've got the file. What do, I, what do I do with it? You extract the included data folder in your free space root directory. Right, let's see if I can find that. Okay, so. Uh, is it going to be in there for Steam? <sighs> bin. <laughs> no, app bin, isn't it? Steam apps. Common uh, free space data. Right, so what's in this <laughs> downloading dodgy files from the internet? Right, let's have a look at the readme file. This is a modified paving the way. Okay, so extract the included data folder into the free space root folder. This should add. Okay, extract the included data folder into the free space root folder, which is there. Yeah. So we back that in there. That didn't overwrite anything according to that. The modified mission will overwrite the mission that ships. Missions. Right. Okay, so it has added SM6A and SM Uh, yeah, there's a wedding this afternoon, Mad Monksoft. Um, okay, the modified version will overwrite the mission that ships with the game inside the root VP. Okay, so is that all I need to do? That seems to be all up there. Okay, so that seems to be it. Shall we try that? <laughs> See if that works, shall we? Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, 
repair the sheepens, etc, etc, etc. Right. Okay. Here we go again. Asteroids on a collision path with the Galatea will be auto-targeted with white brackets on your HUD. Because we've been playing an hour now and we haven't got anywhere. Okay, well, they're, they are destroying things, which is something. They've got quite a lot of anti... I've got some eyes, too. There's a, there's a rock. Missed much, no. <laughs> well, we think we've run into a bug um, where the ship that we're escorting doesn't can't navigate for some reason properly. And as a result, it just dies, and I get blamed for it, which means I can't continue the game. A bit me, to be fair. So we've now, <laughs> very dodgily, downloaded some random file from the internet. And we're hoping that will fix it. This is Free Space 1, or more accurately, Conflict Descent Free Space The Great War. So good. Still on course for the jump zone. Never do that, kids. Yeah, that's only professional. <laughs> don't, don't, don't download files from the internet. I mean, I've got, I've just got a lot of scams and things like that. I can see that, you know, it's not a good idea. Pew, though, to be fair. has hardly been hit yet. There's a sudden ramp up in difficulty somewhere along the line here, isn't there?
subspace now. Yay! It works. Hey, random fall downloaded off the internet succeeded. <laughs> That's all. Completed both the objectives. In beta Return to the bastion. <sighs> right, on we go. That was too easy. It was a too much bug, but hey, at least we got it fixed. I did it without cheating. Welcome to the GTD Bastion. Hey, look, instead of you being demoted and thrown out of the army, the I got promoted with a flying cross. Fine, and the bridge thanks you for the skillful escort through the field. You will rendezvous with her in the Beta Cygni system soon. We are currently underway to the IKEA system for your next mission. For I'm your to the IKEA system. Destroying the Sheevan fighter while escorting the Plato, as well as your successful escort of the Galate in the asteroid field. We are awarding you the Distinguished Flying Cross. Technically, I didn't cheat there with GB. I just changed the conditions of the test. <laughs> I, I don't believe in the no-win scenario. <laughs> ah, dear. Um, okay, so that's good. Right, so options. Let's switch it back to where we were on easy mode, because that seemed to be around. That's what it, that was what the default was. Um, so technically that's not cheating. I didn't cheat. No, I didn't cheat. I changed the mission so that the ship would get to the jump point properly. <laughs> that's not cheating. That's fixing the bug. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Yes, you missed You missed Wintermute GB un unreasonably accusing me of cheating, which I'm not. <laughs> Mad Monksoft has... Did I set the difficulty level back? I didn't for that mission, though, that's true. I was playing that one very easy, so I suppose I'll give you that. Is that a cheat? It's not quite a cheat, is it? Um, we just replaced the Galatea's Helmsman with a competent one, basically. A sober one, yeah. Uh, anyway, so right, I've, I've, <laughs> we've done that mission. I think I've done that mission justice, though. I've not been playing it for an hour. Ah, <sighs> dear. Right, onwards, onwards. Welcome to the GTD Bastion. Me. The Bastion is on a special ops mission to investigate and acquire Shivan technology. Ooh. This includes weaponry, shielding, and stealth weaponry. technology. Weaponry? Intelligence has determined that at least one point of Shivan entry into our space lies in the IKEA system. Okay. It's a sneaky place to get at into the space the At least five cargo depots of unknown system. origin have been located here in IKEA. These cargo formations are different than any Vesudan and Terran formation and are believed to belong to the Shivans. Sneakily left their cargo lying about. Reconnaissance indicates that the depot is protected by sixth century guns on the outer edges. This depot provides a prime opportunity to gather more information about the Shivans. Their offensive activity in this system is at a minimum, and we do not believe that they will make a serious attempt to defend this depot. Long-range scanners indicate that some of these cargo containers contain unusual electronics. Ooh. They appear to be similar to those used to give the Shivans their shielding technology. So for some Short bizarre reason, the Shivans have left a bunch of really, really top-secret high-tech stuff unguarded, mostly in the system near us. Further reconnaissance <laughs> Does that sound like a trap? container group may contain parts for a Shivan sensor array. A short-range scan of this group should provide crucial data needed to adjust ship sensors to attain radar loss. She did. She put a D in weaponry. Weaponry. Scanning those containers is your secondary objective. Okay, scanning containers. Yep. You will jump in approximately six kilometers from the cargo depot. Proceed to the cargo depot quickly and eliminate all sentry guns. This will enable our freighters to collect the cargo after you have scanned it. Fair enough. Right, destroy all sentry guns and use your sensors to scan the Shivan cargo container. This sounds like a trap to me. It's too quiet here. Exactly. See? My, my thinking exactly. Yeah, this doesn't feel right. <laughs> Maintain radio silence, pilot. You have a job to do. There seems to be a lot of sentry guns. Is SC. Shaven Wing arriving! Oh. Just 
destroy sentries. We've got another one. Is there a trick thing here to go and deal with the sentries or deal with the incoming ships? I do not like this! thingies faster. It's too quiet here. Let's go straight for the cargo canisters. Yeah, this doesn't feel right. Nope, you're quite right, guys. I told you it was going to be a trap. Maintain radio silence, pilot. You have a job to do. Seven wing arriving. It's too quiet here. That's not what happened last time, though. Let me attack the... Yeah, this doesn't feel right. What I did last time was attack the sentry gun. Maintain radio silence, pilot. You have a job to yeah. do. Yeah. Let's go for that. That was weird. Seven wing arriving. Okay, guys, cover me. Four fighters. Affirmative, sir. Destroy a sentry gun. We've got another one. I do not like this. I like this. Okay. 
That's all the data we need. Get out of there, Alpha. Okay. Subspace drive engaged, yeah. Okay, so it was a trap. I told you it would be a trap. It is fortunate that you were able to escape the Shivan trap. Yeah. Your persistence in obtaining the data we needed is commendable. While yep. you were unable to gather the shield data, another of our IKEA task forces was successful in acquiring it. The data you did gather about Shivan's sensor technology will be vital in combating the Shivan forces. Our technicians now believe they will be able to implement a targeting solution for Shivan yes, ships. Now we can flip back. Good work, pilot. Kill the dudes. Oh, cutscene. Where is this? Ready? All set. Starting sequence 52 gamma. Five, four, three. Power level steady at two, one point two one gigawatts. Are holding steady. One point twenty one gigawatts. Sequence two in three, two, one point twenty one gigawatts. Mark. Okay. Weird alien tech with glowy stuff. That's it. It held. Reading fifty nine percent energy loss, but it held. Wow. I don't know what they're doing. The ETA has signed a ceasefire and non-aggression pact with the Vasudans. Command has already expressed great relief, largely due to the huge drain on military and economic resources the war has caused in the past few years. Okay. The end of the 14-year war should bring peace. Unfortunately, there is no time to breathe easy. After the third fleet lost the GTD Amadeus in the Vega system, the GTA Amadeus, and the Amadeus. Parliament of the Sudan have both Amadeus, declared Amadeus, open Amadeus. states of war against the Shivan forces. Right, so we're at war again. Unfortunately, not all the Sudan forces have agreed to the ceasefire. Oh, really? Reports have been received of attacks by a rogue group of the Sudans calling themselves the Hammer of Light. Nice. The Hammer of Light appears to be willfully aiding the Shivan cause, citing some of the Sudan legend about the coming of an all powerful race. Okay. If you encounter any HOL forces, you are to treat them as hostile and are to use any force necessary to neutralize them. Okay, so we can still shoot them anyway. With the vital data gathered by the Galatea at the IKEA depot, our technicians now know enough about Shivan technology to successfully target their ships. You should also be able to track Yay. them on radar. I always have coffee when I watch radar. The Avenger cannon is now being loaded on every Terran and Vasudan ship in the Good galaxy. Guns. You will find these cannons far more effective against the Shivan shields. Nice. That's good, so let's go and kill some Shivans. At roughly 1400 him. hours, a large convoy carrying one of our newly developed shield prototypes was deployed. It was expected that the Shivans would attack the convoy. The Shivans destroyed the convoy. What the Shivans do not know is that the convoy was a decoy. There were a total uh. of four working prototypes, only one of which was destroyed. 
You are to take two wings of fighters to escort the three remaining shield prototypes. Oh, no. It's an escort mission. think you are just another shipment headed for Beta Cygni. This is not the direct route to Earth, which should divert the Shivans from our true intent. You are to accompany the freighters until the Vasudans arrive to escort them on the second leg. Do not leave the freighters until they have jumped to the Beta Cygni system. The Shivans have hit everything sent from this installation. Expect resistance. Many pilots lost their lives today, that the chances for success on this mission would be greater. You will succeed. Dismissed. Sure. Obscure. Yes, I think I got that one. The new screen's held. Yes, that's from the Star Trek the motion picture, isn't it? When the uh, Vija fires the plasma blob at them. <laughs> um, right. Okay, so we got to we got an escort mission. Escort the shield prototypes. The mission that everybody hates. We've now got Avenger guns though, so this this is cool. We can target the bad dudes. Right, so they, that, that's the space station, I'm guessing. And these are the things that we're trying to hunt. Oh, those are countermeasures, right, okay. Okay, so there we go. Time to... That's presumably... These are presumably the things we're supposed to be escorting. Okay, so I've got countermeasures. What does that button do? Makes a beeping noise. Does. Oh, there's the jump point over there, right? Okay, so we're heading over to the jump point. That, that button there makes a beep. I don't know what that means, but. There we go. Expect the unexpected. Okay, where's well, an escort mission? We've got to get from over here to, as you can see, over there. Heads up, we have company! There we go. All ships, all fighters, engage enemy. I'm on it. Let's see how well these work. Yes! The new guns work. Happy days. Hold taking serious damage. Don't get shot then.
you can see the beginning of the end of the route they've got to take. Enemy wing has just arrived. fix other stuffs. Enemy wing has just arrived. This game, though, I have to say, I'm enjoying it. The, the bugs, notwithstanding, but we are. Oh, we're escorting, flying in formation. Just arrived. Let's go get him, boys. Sir, should we assist? 
assist? No. Auto, Mr. Esco, this. We're sticking. Our orders are to escort Theta. Exactly right. That's what we're gonna do. Seven percent, but can't go get one at the back. Though. It's always the one at the back that gets killed. Yeah, the cargo ships have got a little bit of defensive fire, which is nice. I like the little damage, the little sparks. Enemy wing has just arrived. Good in this game, which is uh, which is refreshing. They're actually competent, at that. competent, which I think is quite nice. Use the missiles. Heads up, we have company. Let's try the missiles. damage effects on the ships. That's really cool. Got the fighter there is on fire and it's kind of sparky. It's a good, it's a good effect. Drew's record with friendly fire is spotty. <laughs> That's one way of talking about my uh, lovely crater that I made.
are relieved. Okay, okay. As soon as we reach the jump point, you will take escort. Until then, Alpha and Beta have guard. Yes. There. Your lack of trust is typical, Terran. Well, we played space games before, mate. We know what's going on. Your son, but the livable trail. I need a dungeon. We have discovered this land. We shall call it this land. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Grrr, Grr, arg. disengaging. To the jump point we go. There's the jump point engaging. Primary objective is complete. Destroy this, destroy that, destroy everything, and escort the things to the thing. Bum, 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 bum. There we go. They're all safe and sound. Bonus objective complete as well. Cargo Get has me. made it to Ribos. Return to base. Return to base. Tea and biscuits, everybody. You did a superb job. Superb job of defending the shield prototypes. You were able to save all three, which not only gives us the technology, but will help expedite its mass production. Yes. Your performance will go down in the books as a standard for future pilots to follow. Simply outstanding, pilot. Nice. In appreciation of your fine performance in our first operation with Allied Vasudans, we are awarding you the Vasudan Alliance Medal. <laughs> nice. I'm getting all the medals. Pretty down happy with that. Right, what's next? We've got time for one more to mission. Advanced training. Maybe. Oh, advanced training. Okay. As you know, research has been completed on the new shielding technology. Shields are being added to all fighters and bombers. In this training mission, you will be instructed on the use of your shield system. Okay. In addition to the new shield technology, the new interceptor aspect seeking missiles are now available. They are more powerful than the MX 50s but require a lock before they may be fired. You will learn how to properly use the interceptor in this mission. Ooh. The shield is an important addition to your ship, and the interceptors are a formidable addition to your arsenal. You must learn how to use them well. Makes sense. Okay, so training mission to finish off the stream. <laughs> right, so I've got to learn how to use a shield and a locking missile. All right. First, right. we'll cover use of the aspect-seeking interceptor missiles. Note that you are fully equipped with interceptors. Interceptors. Unlike heat-seeking missiles, such as the MX-50, you must acquire a lock on your target in order for an aspect-seeker to home. However, the aspect-seeker is well worth this effort, as its homing ability is much stronger. Okay. Once fired, the aspect-seeker will track its target anywhere in space. Once the heat seeker loses track of its target, it is not likely to reacquire lock. Crater 1 is now entering. Let's see how you do with those interceptors. Target the freighter. Yep. 
Notice the red indicator moving toward your target. That's the aspect diamond. Once it has moved onto your target, you'll see the lock indicator. This indicates your interceptors are locked and ready to fire. Now fire one interceptor at the freighter. Fox one, go! Note how fast the interceptor moves. They also deliver quite a payload. A round of interceptors can be fired every three seconds. Fire another round and note the countdown timer in your weapons gauge. Note that the interceptor is nearly useless if fired before lock has been attained. This is a crucial difference between the interceptor and the MX-50. Now target the weapon subsystem on the freighter. Good. Now wait until you have attained lock on the weapon subsystem. Now, fire your interceptors until the weapon subsystem has been destroyed. Well done. Note your interceptors will be effective in destroying subsystems on large targets. Now unload your interceptors until you've destroyed Freighter 1. In order to gain aspect lock on a moving target, you must keep the target's lockbox in a fixed location inside your HUD reticle. I will now call in fighter drones. When the first drone enters, target it and acquire lock. Try to keep the target indicator in the center of your HUD reticle. Okay. Once you have acquired lock, fire an interceptor to destroy the drone. Note, these drones will not be using countermeasures. Shooting fish in a barrel. absorb a large amount of incoming weapon energy. Nice. As the shield absorbs damage, it becomes weaker. However, it automatically regenerates itself over time. Nice. Your shield integrity gauge is located at the lower right of your HUD. Mm. It is flashing now. There it is. Your shield is divided into four quadrants, each able to withstand a certain amount of damage. 
When a quadrant of your shield suffers damage, the corresponding section of your shield integrity gauge will flash. Observe. Note the front of your shield is flashing as if you've taken damage. Oh yeah, look at that. There's a flashing indicator. Note how the gauge changes as your shield takes more damage. When a shield quadrant has been destroyed, all damage will pass through to the underlying hull. Note that your shield automatically recharges over time. I will accelerate this process to save time. Now observe as the front quadrant of your shield prepares itself to full strength. I see. Pretty cunning. Now your shield has recharged back to full strength. Next, we'll cover shield management. There are a number of ways you can manage your shield. The simplest is the Equalize Quadrants function. Yep. I have damaged your front shield quadrant again. Now use your Equalize Quadrants function to repair your front quadrant. Press Q. Well done. Note that your front section has been largely recharged. This came at the expense of shield energy from the three other quadrants. Uh, maybe I'm this going is just to a reduce simulation, most of your shield real. strength. Note that three of your four quadrants are now near zero strength. Now you'll learn how to maximize shield strength in a specific quadrant. First, you'll maximize the shield strength in your front quadrant. Well done. Note that your front quadrant is at full strength while the others were drained. That's quite cool. I like that. Maximizing your front shield quadrant is especially useful when you're attacking a large ship against its turret fire. Now I want you to maximize your rear shield quadrant. If you're pursuing an important objective and are being attacked from the rear, maximizing your rear shield quadrant can be very useful. Yeah, that's a good point. If you have a simulation, why simulate drones? I don't well know. done, pilot. Aspect-seeking missiles are an important part of your arsenal. Use them well. I like the shield thing. And proper nice. shield management can make all the difference in a crucial battle. This concludes your training. It's like the extra one, but even more sophisticated. You haven't just got front and rear shields, you've got side shields as well. That's quite good. Right, presumably, hyperspace hell out of here then. Yeah, it doesn't look like a simulation, does it? Is that the real thing? So how can you drain my shields and recharge them? Congratulations, Congratulations I've completed my completed basic training. training. Nice. Right, well, let's find out what's going to happen next week. Radical Vasudan Splinter Group, known as the Hammer of Light, oh, has been guys. conducting many surprise attacks on convoys throughout Beta Cygni. These attacks must be stopped. The Hammer of Light presence is to be eliminated from this system once and for all. A Hammer of Light cargo depot, which is believed to be the primary supply center for all Hammer of Light activities in the system, has been located. This depot is guarded by a wing of Seth-class fighters as well as an Aten-class cruiser, the Ramses. The Hammer of Light does not have shielding technology, so this operation should be simple. Yeah, but that's what you said about the other mission. Your primary objective is to capture the Aten cruiser Ramses. You are to disable and disarm it with disruptor cannons, then protect the Omega transports while they capture it. Do, Do not, not destroy, destroy the Ramses. Ramses. The crew of the Ramses will be interrogated to learn more about the Hammer of Light. The subjects did not survive interrogation. Once the Ramses has been disabled and disarmed, destroy all cargo in the area. The Hammer of Light cannot be permitted to resupply. The containers store Vasudan supplies useless to the GTA. You are to lead Alpha Wing on this operation. Your ships are equipped with our new shielding system. In case of any unforeseen problems, await further orders from command. Capture the Ramses, destroy the cargo depot. Right, well, that, that's okay. Well, that'll take us. That's, that's quite nice to do next week. That sounds like a totally straightforward mission where nothing unexpected is going to happen at all. 
<laughs> so, so yeah, so this is a good game, other than the bug that sort of delayed us a bit there at the beginning. It's it's good. It's very immersive, and I like the focus on the ship tech. It's very sophisticated um, for back in the day. So yeah, I mean, good, good thumbs up for this game. Enjoying it, definitely enjoying it. Right, my friends, it is time once more for the curtains to close, the shutters to come down, and for us to. <laughs> I'm wearily back into the real world of Saturday mornings and uh, go on from there. I will see you again on Monday for more writing stuff, Thursday, etc, etc, etc. And yeah, be good. Look after yourselves. Thank you very much indeed. And I will see you soon. Retro Commanders. Be good. Bye bye now. Oh, if I could only get out of the game. I can't really. Where's the exit? Oh, there it is. Bye. <laughs>